what's the daily experience of a son and daughter or Christian like when we live in faith? Well, again, in, in the face of all circumstances, we, we can believe in who God is and his presence and his goodness, right? And that makes me free. Again, that gives me a different starting place. Um, and again, maybe just, I, I don't have to belabor like all the, all the different circumstances, but when a son or daughter lives in faith and they live in hope that, um, like, like we can hope everything from God that no matter the circumstances, no matter my suffering, that I have, I have a real theological, the gift of theological hope that God will bring good about all, all things, that God will, that God is sovereign, that Jesus is Lord. Poco a poco vamos a llegar Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are We make our way Hey, hey, hey I'm Father Mark Mary. Hey everybody, Father Innocent here Peace y'all Father Angelus Father Angelus is feel, as well. feeling feisty I don't cool. know about that I just ran downstairs so I got a little wind It's good <laughs> One thing that You guys are both from Nebraska And Nebraskans take steak serious That's true one of the mistakes that I made last year freely that I didn't make this year is we have a special Christmas party for the fr- or the postulants before they go. And there's two, there's what's it called? There's like two courses. The first one is like charcuterie stuff. Yeah. Dip, chips, whatever. Yeah, something like that. And then it's like the main course. And your parents always are always very generous and supply the... Thanks, mom. The, thanks, the, mom and dad. I don't think dad listens, but thanks for that. Um, but... Last year, I put like all the stuff on the plate that I was gonna put the steak on. And yeah, bro. <laughs> there was like, plates. I over, plastic that. plates over there, and there you are taking your dinner plate up. It's just very funny. Not just tacky, bro. Tacky. I learned. I didn't do it this year. So. <laughs> um, just tacky. He called you tacky. It's all right. One of the when um one of the things I look forward to. So before this podcast, we're recording this podcast before Seek happened, and I just found out I'm on a, like an ascension like Ascension Press, Ascension Presents, whatever panel. And you uh, do great, bro. Well, here's the thing. It, here's who's on it. It's it's Father Mike. It's Dr. Shree. It's Jeff Cavins. Who else is on it? Uh, Father Josh Johnson, Father Gregory Pine, Jackie Francois. The, I mean, and you. And me. The chance of me <laughs> saying anything is less less than one percent <laughs> unless like because i think there are some people like coordinating it unless they like ask father mark mary this is a question for you bro own it go in there show them who's boss <laughs> <laughs> father father doctor uh, excuse all me. of you excuse me <laughs> jackie i have here. something to say so we'll see what happens with that you know because i feel like a lot of it's going to be an encouraging experience people are being excited and then i'm gonna go there just to put me back in my place and I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just be there quietly looking at everybody jeff, jeff you're doing great <laughs> yeah because I'm not like on Jeff, this. Jeff, can I give you some feedback? No, okay. on the, yeah, exactly. Oh, no, actually, this is what I think the Greek says, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Um But if, if for there are those who only know me through the podcast, like my role on the podcast to be kind of the point into like, yeah. you know, to talk and to navigate things. That's not necessarily how I, my like impulse in real life. No, it isn't. At all. You know, so I, I couldn't, I, I just, if a question was asked generally, I just, there's n- zero chance. <laughs> Unless I guess what I know, even Father Gregory is a religious, so I I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted. Yeah, keep us posted. Let's Hopefully, next goes. episode I'll I'll remember. But anyway, it'll be fun to be there, and um, we look forward to recording the You're podcast gonna... with you guys too. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. wait. who's gonna do it actually? Uh, it's gonna Father Isaiah, Father PT, Brother Angelo, and myself. It's, it's a strong. Great. That's cast. a strong. Yeah, I think so. Let I us know so. if people miss us. <laughs> They probably will. It's my, my, I know you did the first couple ones by yourself, but it's my first one in a long time. Yeah. And is it, it really going to count though? Is it yeah, actually going to I don't think it really counts. I don't think it really counts. It's not going on like our main thing. We're going to talk Welcome about to New York, all the horns in the background. Prayer is battle and dance based off of a Father Isaiah thing. Sweet. You can dance a little bit. I'm not going to dance at all. Probably not even a little bit. Not tempted to in front of all your people. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know though. But with that cat, this is good. Again, I don't mean to be cheesy, but with with that cat lineup and you being up there, not uh, I'm talking. I'm going back to the panel. Um, the, you can you can live in total freedom. I'm in, yeah. right, like just knowing who you are. Like you don't have to play the game. You can just be yourself. No, the, I think the the trick is to not as like a self defense mechanism go the other way of like 
Well, I'm definitely not going to say anything because yeah, I'm like so like like just I'm just a little Franciscan, bro. Yeah, you know, but just still be like myself be in it, you know. Yeah. But I just couldn't imagine saying anything. You're going to be great. Yeah, I probably wouldn't. Right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, if, if I you was were, you, yeah, yeah, I would definitely wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe is it too late to back out? Is it too late to. <laughs> yeah, if I was you, I would You're find a way. I would find a way to. Just get, no, I'm I would a, just come out swinging. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah, go the opposite. Out, just, <laughs> no, let me actually tell you about the Bible in a year. In, in interrupt Bible timeline. interrupts yeah, yeah. people. If I would did this, this is what I would have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, that's awesome. We'll keep you posted. People of God. All right, so uh, we're continuing with our third installment of Interior Freedom by Father Jacques Philippe. Father Angelus has been very excited about the end of each of these episodes with the idea that he thinks it's going to be popular. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm, we'll see. Actually, this is great, actually. You actually, do, well, it's interesting. Really I mean, I, obviously, I teach this and I've teach the taught this, but it's again, it's a different context when you're actually it's conversational with mm-hmm. guys. And so I, I'm just trying to give some good kind of foothold or handholds for people to kind of enter into. So if people read it, if they don't read it, I. I just think it's good stuff. I think a lot of what we do in the podcast does hit on core core realities of faith, core realities of gospel, yeah. core realities of like conversion and deepening their experience with the Lord. But you always, I always hear on the road, people will always reference particular episodes that they go back to. Right. And so I just think this is pretty fundamental. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's more and more people that just drawn to like make this something more than just a nice episode, but like, oh mm-hmm. gosh, I really have to be in that and, and wrestle with that. And, and I think freedom is, is, it, it, I mean, it calls, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's provocative and it moves us because we want to be free, but I do think it can be an abstract reality. Like, what does it mean mm-hmm. to live in freedom? What does it mean to be, um, to, to live in freedom of the sons and daughters of God? Right. There's a lot of ways you could go there. And I think Father uh, Philippe does, does just a great job of kind of making it really practical of like, what does it actually mean to practice and I'm like last episode was on acceptance. Wow. Like if you actually practice that, you'll experience like the, just a deeper freedom to live in the daily experiences of your life. Mm-hmm. Right. But again, it, it can, the, the idea of freedom can be abstract. So we're trying to just to give just some concrete ways people can, can live it. Before getting into it, uh, two things again, if you want to go pokemerch.com, get it some CFR podcast merch stuff. Do we get any merch? Are you going to give me anything? We have some around. Oh, hmm. but it's like, you can't, what are you going to, you're going to put a sticker on your face? What are you going to, you're going to wear your, I can go out, kind of market these things when I go places, kind of wear something cool. No, no, you'll be all right. You're not, you're not cool. That's (laughs) the point. Uh, Am I going to, one of the things that came up at the dinner table last night that came up because of the visitation is, or we're going to, we might, our teacher of the postulants for Franciscan stuff is going to get a new assignment probably. Would you like to step into that? Is role? that what you're? Am I going to have to do? I have to prepare myself for that. <laughs> it's a possibility. So it's a possibility. All right. I need a, if he's leaving too. I need a thirty eye for the vocation office too. <clears throat> Just saying. You want to do that too? It'd be great. Great. Done. Uh, actually, actually, let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, talk to me, Father Innocent, about freedom and the theological virtues. Okay, so I need everybody to stick with me here. You're going to read another long quote. (laughs) No, no, stop. (laughs) It's just good. It's better than me speaking. So I think all of us, but also our listeners, like when we start talking about kind of, um, kind of maybe just typical Catholic things like, oh, theological virtues, I've heard of them before. It's the temptation is to kind of check out or just like, oh, I got it. I I know what they are. Right. Um, So what I think is pretty, pretty just powerful here is, is Jock Philippe comes out swinging saying this. The importance of faith, hope, and love have come up frequently in the preceding chapters. He, we're Catholic. We talk about these things. They are classically termed theological virtues. In other words, they're virtues that connect us to God. We can only acquire interior freedom to the degree that we develop these three virtues. Right. So it's, that's a big statement. Mm-hmm. We can only inquire, acquire interior freedom to the degree that we develop these three virtues of faith, hope, and love. Right. So again, we had a couple episodes of, uh, uh, some time ago on virtue. We, t- we obviously as Catholics, we deeply believe in virtue, the, the theological virtues, the cardinal virtues and all the other, you know, virtues. But, but sometimes I think it's, it's hard for us to kind of like figure out how to practice them and grow in them and things like that. But it, I just, 
again, I want to throw that out there that this is, this is why this is important is for father Philippe that you cannot grow in freedom unless you grow in faith, hope and love and, and Mm -hmm. how they're deeply connected. So here's what, here's what he says on page 95 of the book. It's, it's, it's a pretty, just pretty well said for Christians. Maturity means the ability to live by faith, hope, and love. Maturing in their Christian life is the theological virtues. Christians are not people who follow a set of rules. Christians are, first and foremost, people who believe in God, hope everything from him, and want to love him with all their hearts and to love their neighbors. Mm. Right? So he just basically gave definitions of faith, hope, and love there. We are, first and foremost, people who believe in God, hope in everything from him, and want to love him and our neighbors. Right? Right? So brothers, he's going to go on to say that, that, the, that, that faith, hope, and love are basically the recipe that, that kind of ignite this deep freedom in, in us to live in sons and daughters of God. To believe in God, to hope in God, and to love God are, are the central core of, of, again, our Christian experience. But he says, this is what it means to be truly free. This is what it means to be true sons and daughters of God if we just have this radical faith, hope, and love at the, at the kind of the, the core of our Christian experience. Do you have any thoughts on that, brothers? <laughs> oh, sounds great. It sounds great. <laughs> sounds a, sounds amazing. Um, if I'm honest, I do have this interior, like, like the idea of like this. When I saw this on the sheet, of, like this interior response as well. Like the magnet, like, oh, seriously, this isn't there a more interesting topic that we can talk about when it comes to interior freedom? So, like, that's a very natural Catholic thing. Like, we hear about that virtues, this, that, faith, open love, baptism, great, you know. So anyway, I'm kind of there, but let me. Ex- Excited to see. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty predictable, but that's why I'm hoping we can kind of unpack it a little bit. But again, I, we, I don't really have any really like silver bullet or like magic. It's not magic, but I think it's just re like putting in front of us again, the experience of the gifts that we received at our baptism. The Holy Spirit was sealed into us at the gift of our baptism, the life of God. And it's particularly faith, hope, and love that are given to us to help us live in a relationship with God and help us to, um, again, to live our sonship, being sons and daughters, like it's it's really in these places, right? That the Holy Spirit gives us. I think in the danger is, and I, to the point you just like given, so like given at our baptism, there's aren't self, I think we, there's a temptation to think that virtue is something I do, that I'm gonna, it's like self, self-acquired. Like I'm gonna grow in this, I need to grow in virtue, I need to grow in patience, I need to grow in these particular things. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a gift. And it's given and it's, it's developed in relationship and it's developed by the power of grace at work in our lives. And so part of my rebellion sometimes is virtue thinks it's my own work. It's my own project. And so I'm going to, as a young man, I'm going to grow in virtue. This is going to be great. And I'm going to, here's my plan and here's my strategy. And this is what I'm going to do. Right. And so I think we, we can't over emphasize enough that faith, hope and love are a gift from God that we develop it and, and participate in rather than I control and do everything on my own, right? So, because that's controlling and doing everything on my own is the opposite of interior freedom, right? But so many, yeah, in my experience with young guys out there, so many is like, virtue is what I do and this is my plan, you know? And so, um, yeah, I can't understate that enough that we just, that we gotta be careful there because it's really dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna try and connect some dots. I'm a little bit sick, so my brain's a little bit foggy. You're doing great, bro. Thanks. Um, but we talked about... And I, so I'm just kind of highlighting and appreciating the introduction of the theological virtues uh, as these virtues which are given from God, right? Because I think uh, one part of an approach to freedom is like uh, kind of radical self-mastery, asceticism. So it's like I'm going to I'm going to practice the strengthening of my will, the sort of subordinating of my passions. I'm going to like do like cold swims and this sort of thing um so that i can be like totally kind of like free and detached right um so i can do so i have like this radical freedom of of like self mastery or whatever and it's like okay well that's that's not it that's not the fullness of it um but then there's also like the approach of freedom again like we've kind of talked about of like okay i'm going to change my circumstances in such a way that they are exactly how i want them and then i'll kind of have the freedom but both of these, if it's the internal one or the external one, right, there is like Father Angels just saying, there's the, here's the thing I'm going to do. Here's the thing I'm going to change. Here's the thing I'm going to achieve. And then my freedom is going to be the fruit of these projects of mine. Um, but if, if 
but what Father Jacques Philippe and what Christianity proposes is like, no, that's that, those aren't going to lead ultimately to a freedom. Um, but right again, if freedom is living from the place of dependence on on my father, living from the place of identity of of who he is, a freedom of like of obedience and dependence and surrender. Well, okay, so these these must be these. I can't manufacture this. I can't give myself this. So I have to like cry out to the Lord for it. And so um, again, like the theological, the virtue of faith, I can't just convince myself. I can't just rationalize myself to um, faith in the Trinity, right? Like I, it, in some degree, it has to be revealed and it has to be given. Um, similarly, like with hope, like there are circumstances where in a lot of ways, uh, reason, history, experience, et cetera, says discouragement, despair, uh, giving up are the most reasonable thing to do. So we need, we need even like theological supernatural hope. And again, like then with charity, particularly in the area of, of forgiveness, um, and mercy, like we need, we need a strength and we need a grace bigger than ourselves to really be able to persevere in it and to remain in it. And so, um, yeah, I, I do. I, it makes sense to me, and I'm really grateful, actually, that Father includes this chapter and that we're doing it because I think it, it really is a, a concrete way for us to to talk about the ways in which, no, this isn't just a, a self-help project. This isn't a self-mastery thing. It's it's more than that, and it's it's a, it comes from and is directed to a relationship. Yeah, for being sick, that was excellent. I mean, even not being sick, it's funny. <laughs> I, I found it hard to follow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's excellent. And so when St. Paul says when the, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The spirit of the Lord is the one that infuses his very life into us of faith, hope, and love, these gifts, right? And so maybe just to make it really concrete, like why don't we just say like when when someone has, you know, when a, when a son or daughter is acting in faith and, and the, it's what, you know, it's the faith that makes them free. You know, they're, they're exercising just like, I truly believe in, in God and who he says he is. Mm. And when someone has this faith in, in who God is, in his goodness, in his presence in their life, they're inc- these people are free. Like they, they again, it's, it's hard to, it's so simple, but when we exercise the theological virtue of faith, we just become so free because we have anchored ourselves in the truth of who God is and that he's real and that he's present, that he's alive. You can, I mean, people add stuff, but we actually believe in, in God in God and who he says he is. And brothers, that just that is just a starting place for freedom because it's a starting place for relationship. And it doesn't start with me and my own limitations, but it starts with God. Yeah, again, it's a gift too. So God knew we needed help in doing this. And so at our baptism, we were given this gift to exercise this ability to, to believe and to have faith, right? And so it's just good to get again to make that connection. This is not coming from a place that's me. It's coming from like, oh gosh, God is in me, helping me to have faith in him. The Holy Spirit is in me, helping crying out in faith, crying out, believing in what God is doing, right? So yeah, just it's that's important. And again, just maybe to talk about like, what's that, what's, like what's the daily experience of a son and daughter or Christian like when we live in faith? Well, again, in, in the face of all circumstances, we, we can believe in who God is and his presence and his goodness, right? And that makes me free. Again, that gives me a different starting place. Um, and again, maybe just, I, I don't have to belabor like all the, all the different cir- circumstances, but when a son or daughter lives in faith and they live in hope, they, um, like, like we can hope everything from God that no matter the circumstances, no matter my suffering, that I have I have a real theological, the gift of theological hope that God will bring good about all, all things, that God will, that God is sovereign, that Jesus is Lord, that he is the father and he, he is the father of my life. I have hope that no matter what, God will bring good out of this, right? And then when I experience the theological virtue of love, I am most free because God's love is at the, the center of my life. And I've, I, my life is, is living from this place, God's love and the ability to, when I feel, like you said, forgiveness, when I feel like I, I can, I'm, I'm so weak and I cannot love by myself or forgive or accept that I can actually have, have the Holy Spirit work in me to, 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 to love and to be loved. Right. And so you just see, and, and hopefully again, tasting the freedom of like when someone lives in faith, hope and love, there's a deeper place we're living from. There's a, there's a, this, and this is the gift I think that's accessible to Christians. Um, but I just wanted to lay those out because you see that there's a, there, there's the fruit is freedom. 
Great. Great. Okay. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know if I have anything to add to that. I, what I want to kind of highlight, and we'll see kind of where it goes, is I think it's pretty profound and worth sitting before is um, from the your first kind of sentence from Father Jacques Philippe that Christians are people who hope everything from him. Um, and certainly faith, theological virtues of faith and charity obviously are, are really integral. But I do think there's a particular importance on emphasizing uh, hope and and the importance of hope in the Christian life and the importance of hope for for the listeners. And and it's not um, it's not what's the word? It's not like a, um, a a tempered hope. It's not like a like a like a tame hope. It's not like a in some ways it's not like a kind of a prudent there's no hedging our bets with with hope in god it's a hope everything from him and and that that is actually what like the risk we're called to do called to is to actually dare to hope everything um from mm-hmm. our father and um the the example that comes to mind i'm not going to use because <laughs> i think it's just a little bit too sensitive but um yeah you know it's oftentimes what what is happening right is one of the the difficulties that people might experience is the is a um is desire unfulfilled so they expected life to turn out in a certain way and there's an there's an there's a desire of their heart that because of how circumstances happen isn't going to be able to be fulfilled in but according to the mode that they desire and even in that situation i think that's why like we need to have a theological hope that actually um Although the circumstances of how you thought that desire was going to be met and satisfied may not be possible, we we still dare to hope that he can satisfy that deepest desire, but just might look differently, right? And and even I think um, sometimes we need the eternal hope, like we need a hope which that that the Lord is going to do what He's going to do, perhaps after after death. Um, so anyway, that's just kind of. I think I think just to emphasize like the boldness and the radicalness and the the um, sort of what's something that's like just the completeness of our hope that we hope everything from him. Um, but again, like but also with the reality that uh, the mode of the satisfaction, the mode of the fulfillment of that promise, that desire may not be according to what we anticipated. And that's why in, like in faith, hope and charity, we need to kind of continue to our discipleship. Just a quick addition. Um, I, th- I think obviously the uh, devotion to the divine mercy is beautiful and you know, Jesus, I trust in you. And uh, it might not be a common understanding. I just remember having to give a talk on that once. I'm like, oh, I wonder what trust is, but trust is actually under hope. It's a, it's a subset of hope. And so if we want to grow in trust, it's good to know. And I think that I think it's probably a very common, maybe one of the most popular things that people say, I want to grow. I want to, Father, I just want to learn how to trust God. You know, this is where it happens. If we want to learn to trust God, it's, it, it's in this experience of hope. Uh, the Catechism of Divine Hopes, I've said this before, but Catechism of Divine Hopes says confident expectation of divine blessing, right? And so this living in this confidence that God will bless me and that God will provide and God will, you know, pour out everything I need in life, you know, and in the midst of that, then trust, they, they call it a trust is a flowering of hope. I think that's, it could be Aquinas. I don't know if I just quote Aquinas directly. Don't quote me on that. But trust is a flowering of hope, right? And so just to connect that, sometimes we, we can put tr- trust in random places, but this is the virtue that we want to exercise and allow the Holy Spirit to move in us in a deeper way if we want to grow in trust. Yeah, Father Mark, when you're talking about hope, I mean, that's kind of where Jacques Leib goes in a big part of the book. There's a section called The Key Role of Hope. And he says this, these considerations show the key role of hope in the Christian life. It could be said that while charity is the greatest of the th- of the three theological virtues, in practice, in practice, hope is the most important. As long as hope remains, love develops. If hope is extinguished, love grows cold. A world without hope soon becomes a world without love. Mm. And that it seems a bit flowery, um, but I think the the, the point is is that. It's again, it's just like maybe love is the most important, but we have to practice hope. We have to, we have to, again, just the trust and the confidence that no matter what I experience in life, that there is hope that Jesus will meet me here, that Jesus will not leave me. His mercy brings me hope, right? Um, there, there, no matter what I experiencing, experience in life, like I've, 
you know, one of the priests recently told us this, that the foundation, the foundation of our life, the bedrock, the bedrock of our faith and of our church is that we always have hope that, that Jesus is Lord and that Jesus will come and that, and he's more powerful than our weaknesses and our, and our, and our, and our brokenness. And we have hope that, that as long as we live and breathe, that he will come and he will be faithful to what he, who he says he is. Right. Um, and that's if we have the hope that he will be faithful, then we can continue the like the life source of love continues to, or we can still live in relationship. Mm. But if we lose hope, um, and we and it's again, it's it, it's it's tragic when we lose hope. That's where despair comes in. Like I, I've lost like we 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 just like lose, just to lose a sense of who God is and that He will really be faithful and He'll come. You know, um, I remember just a holy priest I went to confession with a long time ago. And again, I was the confess, confessee or whatever. So I can say, I can say this penitent, penitent sorry. Um, I was the penitent and it was just really beautiful because I was, I was, I think I had just experienced a lot of struggles in my, my own life and my own heart. And, and I was carrying around like a sadness and a discouragement that we speak of. And, and I just said, what's, was just feeling that and it, life was kind of burdensome and you could sense it. And, um, so I had said all my sins and great. And he was like, Hey father, like, or brother, I was a brother at the time. He's like, I would, I would like ask, I would ask you to consider, um, telling Jesus right now that you're, that you, you're sorry, um, because you have sinned against hope. And I was like, what? I like, I was like, it sins against hope. Like, he's like, yeah. He's like, I want you to tell Jesus you're sorry because you, you have lost a sense of hope that he is really going to come to you and love you in this. And, and he's really enough for you. Right. So it's funny because like, I never confessed ever as sin, sins against hope, <laughs> but that's exactly the way I was living though. I had, I had kind of given up mm-hmm. and, and lost this sense that life could be different or that, that, um, that, that Jesus was going to come into these places. And I had just kind of felt defeated and sad. Um, and so I thought I was just really struck by that because it was, it was, it was a sin against hope. Like I had, I, I wasn't free because I failed to hope and, and I, I failed to hope that I could change and that Jesus was going to meet me here. Um, so I just, beautiful. I felt, felt it was really beautiful because it, it helped me just help me realize kind of where that sadness came from. I was, I was not hoping. One of the, to kind of help explain these, Father Jacques Philippe goes through St. Peter. Could we just kind of like help to help kind of put some flesh on faith, hope and charity and what it has to do with interior freedom. Could we just kind of go through yeah. what he does with St. Peter? Yeah, I'm very happy. I was very happy to do that, but I realized that I didn't know. I was hoping that it would kind of fit into the context. So I'm very happy to do yeah. that. Um, so Jacques Philippe in, in what, He's just very good at giving images and examples. We had talked about Chain Trez. We talked about Eddie. He's very good at giving <laughs> stories. And what I appreciate about, appreciate about this section particularly is that he uses the life of St. Peter to talk about how Peter is consistently living in faith, hope, and love. And he calls this in a kind of a beautiful, kind of unique way. He calls these um, faith, hope, and love like uh, outpourings of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And usually if you if we think about our own experience, there's different outpourings of grace where faith is very real, hope is very real, and love is very real. And so he puts this over St. Peter's life and he calls them just outpourings of the Holy Spirit um, in context of there's a, uh, again, I'm sorry if I'm too wordy here, but um, there's a joyful outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is, is associated with the virtue of faith. There's a sorrowful outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's associated with hope. And there's a glorious outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's associated with love. Mm, that's quite beautiful, actually. And so he says, when when Peter in his own life experiences this joyful out, outpouring where he, he experiences this gift of faith, he says that encountering Jesus for the first time, joy surges in the heart and we are drawn to follow him. It awakens a response of in our life of faith. We come to truly believe in him, captivated by his presence, goodness, and his calling in our life. So maybe let me open it up. Jesus, or excuse me, Peter experiences Jesus, uh, Jesus on on the on on the seashore, right? And mm-hmm. and and there's something in his heart. There's something that moves that that because of Jesus's presence, his goodness, the gift of who he is. As as Peter will get to know Jesus, it elicits something in him to really exercise the gift of of, of faith. Like the, I believe 
in Jesus. I believe in who he says he is. As I spend time with him, I, because of his goodness and his faithfulness and his mercy and his love, I begin to really believe in who Jesus says he is. Mm. Yeah, that's powerful. And I, and I, yeah, we, all of us have that moment, right? All of us have have those experiences in our own lives, right? Just thinking back to our own initial conversions, and so like the the faith that kind of uh, yeah bursts forth in this experience. I you know we were in middle school, high school, like just the reality of just like something's different. I'm captivated by the person of Jesus, right? Um, and so, and I love this. It's just a clear um, part of the response in the heart. Of, of the person of Jesus and my heart is drawn to him. My heart is captivated by him to put my, my faith in him um, and to believe in him who he is, you know? So I, I, I just love that. You know, a couple of episodes ago, father Angelus shared the brother Angelo image of like going through Walmart. And you're not in a hurry for the shopping spree. Cause like your father owns it all. And, and in some way, perhaps that's like what the, the light bulb that, um, that the theological first virtue of, of faith first turns on is um like basically like who your father is right like you're you're um and that's what Je- jesus is coming in and he's going to save us and and in saving us he's also going to reveal to us like that we get to share in his own relationship with the father so i think that's like that's like what this this first this gift of faith because i'm trying to think like how does this have relate to interior freedom and so like the gift of faith turns on the lights that we know who our father is and that he owns the whole store and so we're like we're free not to have to grasp and achieve and run and all that sort of stuff right um and also that's going to kind of i think nicely connect to to hope insofar as it's like uh, I have a father and also my father owns this whole store. So I like all of this, all of his, all of this stuff, I can have any of it whenever I want. Right. So and, all of you people need to back off. <laughs> right. <laughs> and there's something beautiful because again, when he experiences this, when Peter experiences this, this, this newfound faith in the son of God, that's why he can give up everything. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why he can leave his father Perfect. and his, and, and the fishing. And, and that's why he can follow him because I actually believe I am experiencing this, I, I believe and have faith in who the son of God is and the worthy response is to give up everything for this. Mm-hmm. Right. And so again, that's how we're free. I can give up my family. I can, I can, um, you know, the, my, my livelihood, my, the fishing, but I also in, in later on, he's going to talk about this, but I also can give up my life. Mm-hmm. I'm actually most free when I lay my life down and I can follow the one I love. Right. And so there's something just really beautiful. He has the gift of faith to actually believe. And so he, and, and, and to give up everything to follow. Um, great. So after this joyful, um, outpouring of the gift of faith, usually it's tested. Right. And so that's where he, uh, Jock Philippe says that this, the, the sorrowful outpouring comes in and the, this is where the, the outpouring of hope comes. Cause he says this, Peter faces his weakness, particularly in denying Jesus. He denies, he weeps, and Jesus looks at, looks at him in mercy. He receives an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in hope. He has to make a real act of hope in Jesus' mercy for him. And this is what he also says, the theological hope can only come from a radical experience of poverty. Whoa. Right, so Peter has the faith to believe in the Son of God. Now, again, suffering comes woundedness comes our own limitations our own brokenness and now usually we face we again when we face this this again our, peter denies jesus and this is where he has to practice hope because now he's faced with this radical poverty that i have denied the one that i love i've denied the one that i have chosen to follow and now i have to believe that and hope in his mercy and hope that in his in his love for me even in my weakness can I, can I truly believe that he is Lord and the, what he says is true? And I can hope that, that, that this, this weakness will not define me. Or that, again, in forgiveness, I can be brought back into relationship with, with him, right? So he places this outpouring of hope in the places of suffering, in the places of weakness, in the places of woundedness. And usually, I mean, that makes sense, right? When we face these things, and we have hope we're free because we know that these things aren't the end, that they don't define us. And we can have hope in Jesus that, um, that he can come and heal us. We can experience freedom in our poverty because we know that's not the end. And we know, know that we don't have to be stuck in it, but that we can expect everything from the Lord. 
from intimacy to forgiveness to mercy to healing and that you know it's not being stuck in it is not the end right um but i think that's a that's a radical statement theological hope can only come from a radical experience of poverty because hope is something that we 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 hope in something we don't have right so it's like we experience our poverty we experience our weakness and so we that's why the outpouring of hope comes because i have to actually to 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 hold fast to this hope because i i don't I don't experience a fullness or I'm experiencing my poverty or lacking. It, before this though, I mean, the beginning of the conversation, we're talking about like in my own experience of talking about it, just like it, we th I thought it was maybe much more flowery and much more like, oh, isn't this wonderful? We're all hoping in Jesus and hoping in heaven. This is going to be great. But to put it in this way is much more real and accessible to the reality of like in my poverty, I still hope. In my poverty, I'm free to hope because I know who God is and I know who Jesus is, right? So that's, yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of thinking out loud here, but perhaps it is when we have, um, you know, we can only like truly hope everything from him when we have like nothing of ourselves. Totally. And I think that's probably the math of it, right? Because as long as there's like some little bit that I'm holding on of like what I th think I'm okay with or I think I have on my own or I think I can't take care of, we're still not hoping everything. But probably, you know, it's, it is when we experience the the fullness of of dependence, the fullness of poverty, that then we can also receive the fullness of hope. Yeah. I wonder how how authentically that we've experienced that actually in our lives because we don't like to feel that, mm -hmm. the weight of that. So maybe we get glimpses of it here and there, but in like until we're radically poor, we we don't necessarily know really what hope is. And know? that's the gut-wrenching experience of Peter's experience, like denying Jesus. I mean, that's a pretty incredible place of hope. Like either the, I have just blasphemed and denied God I mean, which kind of he did, but, but now what's going to happen? Can I, can I hope in this? Cause he, Jacques does mention that it's, it's a Jesus is a gaze upon him that reminds him and, and, and loves him even in this place. And that's what instills the hope that like, wow, like I denied you, but the way you look at me right now tells me that you're not going to give up on me, mm -hmm. that you love me and or your mercy is, is bigger than my weakness. And so he's allowed to, to hope that like, you will not give up on me. You will never, you will never, um, you'll never leave me in this place of struggle. And that's how they get it because it reignites his faith again, right? So it's kind of funny because everything's kind of, they're all kind of in that together, but it reminds him of that, of the initial experience when he encountered Jesus, when he sees his gaze again, right? So you, so Jacques Philippe's going to say that he's in that moment of denying and Jesus looking at him in love and mercy and the spark of hope in his heart, he's going to say that he's a free man there, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. he's experienced a freedom of the sons of God because he's able to hope because of Jesus's love and mercy in his life. Even in the worst circumstances, I'm actually free to respond and to stay with Jesus, even though I'm like embarrassed, I'm, I'm, I'm living in shame. And I so hate that's, the, that's the interior freedom yeah. is in this. It doesn't rescue me from the situation, but I'm free to respond in it. And Jesus is yeah. there loving me. And I'm thinking of, of how the, this is a deepening, right? Cause we talked about when we're talking about faith, uh, when Jesus calls him at the shores, come follow me. And he leaves behind the external things. And so there is an experience of like a yeah. physical dependence yeah. or poverty, right? But now this is actually the fullness of the experience of a poverty when it's like even morally, even like, I, I can't, I can't do it, right? And this is now this, like, this is the, this is that, that physical material poverty, the following of the Lord, um, I think was leading towards this experience of the, like the most deep kind of intimate, like interiorly, I'm poor that now great. the fullness of, of salvation and, and hope can. And to stay in that place is just like, that's where that's yeah. a deep, a deep, deep freedom, right? Because from this place, again, he's going to experience, experience a, a glorious outpouring, which is the, the grace of love, right? And it says Pentecost is the glorious outpouring of the Holy spirit where Peter is filled with the fire of God's love. So the beautiful, beautiful thing here, brothers, is that now Peter's going to be totally trained. He's had the faith. He's, he's made an act of hope and we, in his weakness. And now he's going to be a Pentecost. And now he's going to, to, to be kind of this. Um, I mean, this is where the, just this radical freedom comes because now the love of God is going to fill him. And the fire of the Holy Spirit is going to fill him. And now he's not just walking around as Peter. Now he's walking around as, as an apostle, one who's sent with the, the power and fire of God's love inside of him. Mm -hmm. So that's why in the Acts of the Apostles, that when he walks in the temple, the, the, there's like this tricky story because it's, it's, it could be taken out of, right out of the story of Jesus in the Gospels. He walks in the, he walks in the temple and someone asked him to, you know, to, to be healed. 
And, and he, now he's acting like Jesus. Now he's living like Jesus. Now the love of God has been so poured into him that that the theological virtue of hope is, is actually, it's, it's alive, it's oozing from him, right? And now he's free. It's not about Peter anymore. Now it's about God. Mm. Um, and the love just pours out and so people are healed. And that's why when Acts of the Apostles, they Peter walks down the street and they try to put him in a shadow, right? Like Peter knows that's not about him, but now it's, it's it's this gift of 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 love that just oozes out of him, um, and I think this is again the freedom of the sons and daughters of God that it's God's love now that's alive. Jesus is actually living in him, um, and this is what I think this is the gift: is faith, hope, and love. It, they're, it's it, they're, he calls it the dynamism, like it's this it's this it's the Holy Spirit that's alive in us. It's the dynamism of faith, hope, and love that makes us free. It's not these static realities. I'm I'm thinking of uh, just kind of applying this now with the experience of Our Lady, right? Like she knew in faith, um, she knew her, who her son was, right? She knew her son was the second person in the Trinity, um, the Messiah. And then he's, right, he's crucified. And she has this experience of holding um, her crucified son, the crucified Savior in her arms, right? And so the, if you will, like the, the argument or the evidence for despair is as real as this kind of limp body <coughs> in her arms, but yet, but yet she hopes, right? And yet she she still has hope, uh, the theological virtue of hope. And this is how, like, because the evidence against hope is so real and so concrete. Like this is again, this is like why it has to be a work of God, because there's going to like we're called to a hope which is beyond I think human expectation or capacity because it's a, it's a hope for in, our, in the case of our lady it's a hope that's just stronger than which is more real than the reality of her the dead son lying in her arms you know um and what does she do like in her in her hope from this place of radical poverty like her hope in action is this like perseverance in prayer this per, this this remaining in the relationship which she you know with the disciple she goes and she waits and she prays um you know, essentially in the words like, come, like, Lord, come, come Holy Spirit. And that's, and Pentecost happens and, 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 um, the Lord is risen from, oh, the Lord is risen from the dead. Pentecost happens. Um, that this is the place where like Peter, he receives now, he receives through the, the through the coming of the Holy Spirit, um, uh, the fullness of the, of, of, of grace and the fullness of the capacity to, to live with charity. So I do think that there's something about like, there's just this Our Lady persevering in prayer, um, you know, knowing he's going to rise, knowing that even as he returns to the Father, like he's the, the Holy Spirit's going to come in a new way. Um, just this, this, I think with Our Lady, there's something there as well as like she asking her for the grace, but also looking at her example of what this looks like. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I, I don't know how we're doing on time, but I have kind of a good. You want to bring it in for a landing with this? Yeah, cr- great. Cl- closer. Great. Um, so this is actually earlier in the book. So it just kind of points to the fact that he he really lays out faith, hope, and love over the whole book. And he says this with St. Therese and Eddie, who we've talked about. True free freedom, the sovereign liberty of Christians resides in the possibility of believing, hoping, and loving in all circumstances. Mm. Thanks to the assistance of the Holy Spirit who helps us in our weakness. This is beautiful. No one can ever prevent us from 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 believing and hoping and loving. For I'm sure that neither nor death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, these things present or things to come, nor powers, height, depth, or, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. No circumstance in the whole world can ever prevent us from believing in God, from placing all of our trust in him, and from loving him with our whole heart and loving our neighbor. Faith, hope, and charity are absolutely free because if they are rooted in us deeply enough, they're able to draw strength from whatever opposes them. The rest of this book aims to illustrate this beautiful truth. Whoever stands it and understands it and puts it into practice achieves sovereign freedom. Mm. Growth in faith, hope, and love is the only pathway to freedom. Whoa. Great. <laughs> it's pretty, it's, he's just pretty strong. I love that. So I think there's just, in, in concluding again, um, Hopefully we've done okay at breaking this down and sharing a little bit, but I do think you want to go to the primary source. Well, you want to go to the secondary source, 
that i don't know if that counts. jesus the, the holy spirit is still the primary sport source yeah. go to him and then interior freedom my father jacques philippe i, I do think it's probably worth reading oh, and totally. pondering and yeah. wrestling with i think his example of saint peter is so clear and yeah. so assess- accessible right so just like oh, what happened in peter's life can happen in mine and most likely for all those listening it has happened but but if we want to continue to grow in these virtues how do i continue to experience this encounter with the lord that deepens my faith and this encounter in my own poverty that that enlivens my hope that then the fruitfulness of both those things that gives me this anointing of love. And And I think we just want to make sure we connect that, that it's actually growth in these areas, recognizing that actually makes us free or actually we exercise freedom. I think just connecting faith, hope, and love to freedom, the way that Peter experienced his life as as a free man, even in his weakness, I think that's what he does so well. I think the whole, there's a whole, the whole third part, third part is on faith, (laughs) hope, and love but it's also interwe- interwoven through all the other parts. So it's and just have, a big thing. For and me. we have access to these outpourings. And so hunger every day to pray for a deeper experiencing these things, to pray to our lady who was the first one to model these and witness these and to experience these. So like to hum- be hungry for that because growing in this gives us an experience of a deeper freedom, right? And so to see it, to acknowledge it, if we experience our own poverty, to actually pray in real time for a deeper hope, a deeper desire to to trust the lord in in all things right so yeah it's just really beautiful and it's very concrete people want to know how they what we do in the midst of some of these things and these graces well this like this was a perfect chapter to recognize that for sure great sweet how about father innocent closes us with a prayer again name of the father the son and the holy spirit Amen. amen father we love you and adore you and thank you and we just do ask for a new outpouring of faith hope and love in our lives we long to be your true sons and daughters, and we long just to be captivated and set on fire with, with these virtues, these manifestations and outpourings of your Holy Spirit. We ask Our Lady and St. Joseph and all the saints to teach us these just the beautiful ways of, of, of receiving faith, hope, and love in our daily life. We ask this all to Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for sticking with us. We'll Thank have, you for sticking with us, Father yeah, Mark. <laughs> not feeling well. We made it. Um, we'll do one more of our episodes on interior freedom coming up next week. Don't know yet what we're going to do for Lent. Let's figure that out. Nothing? You're going to be great. We'll figure that out. Um, did you guys look at the State of the Community letter? I did. Did you see the very ending? No, I didn't. It was, it, the sign off was Poco Poco. We'll f- keep following Jesus. Poco a Poco or something like that. Yes, come on. <laughs> Poco a Poco, the phrase has made it to the highest level. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the highest level. the community. Um, and uh, yeah, again, if you want to, if you want to, to check out some of the merch, you can go to pokemerch.com. Of course, the videos are out there on YouTube if you want to check out Spirit Juice's channel. We don't talk about it, but we have an Instagram which people seem to like, CFR <laughs> underscore Franciscans, if you want to check that out. People do seem to like it. It's great. Yeah. So we'll see you again next week, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Father Mark Mary. Peace. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Peace. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day That God is love That life is short That all will be well And I know